I want to introduce you to one of my favorite instruments on campus. This is a GC mass spec, which stands for gas chromatography mass spectrometer. And so with this instrument, and why it's applicable, and why I'm telling you about it today, is because we're about to learn about isotopes. Now, isotopes are something that have the same number of protons, because if you start out with six protons, and you try and change the number of protons that that atom has, you're actually changing that atom into another element. And you can't do that. That's alchemy. That's what they were trying to do when they were trying to turn everything in the world into gold. Okay, we can't do that. All right, so you can't change the number of protons an element has. But you can change the number of neutrons, and you can change the number of electrons. So an isotope is what happens if I change the number of neutrons that an atom has. So remember, those neutrons, those are held rigid within the nucleus, helping keep that nucleus together amongst all of those positive protons that it's surrounded with. So an isotope means you've got the same number of protons in a couple different atoms, but within every atom, they might have a different number of neutrons. Huh, interesting. How do they know they did that? All right, well, we learned a little bit about the history in a previous video. The way we can confirm that today is with our GC mass spec. That's how we get those average um, atomic masses. This instrument can actually test and figure out how many isotopes do we have of each compound. So do I have a carbon that weighs 12, 13, or 14? How many 12s do I have? How many 13s? And so that's where you get the weighted average atomic mass, where you take, you know, if I have 65, carbon 12s, 27 carbon 13s, and 2 carbon 14s. It'll tell you, all right, let's average all of these masses together based on the average isotopic abundance in the world, all right, or in the sample. And so what happens within this instrument is you take it, you place it in something volatile, that just means it evaporates quickly, and put it down and inject it down into the gas chromatography part of this instrument. Gas chromatography vaporizes the sample, gets those molecules moving really, really, really fast, Okay. They spin around and around and around and two, through this little circle part of the instrument, which is your column, it interacts, slows some stuff down, so that way whenever it exits the column, it'll exit only based on um, affinity for the column, which means if you have a whole bunch of compounds inside of your sample, only type A will exit at one time, and then another compound might exit later. And so when you exit the chromatography part of the instrument, you have um, only certain types of looting through it at a one time. Then it enters the mass spec, and the mass spec is where we're able to look and say how much does something weigh. When your sample comes out of the GC in those little packets that are separated by different molecule types, you would still have molecules that might have carbon 12s, carbon 13s, carbon 14s, and so they're all gonna have different amounts of these based on ah, nature, how much it naturally can't got from nature. But then it enters the mass spec. And what the mass spec does is it hits those compounds with electron beams, making it so now they're charged, okay? They're going to become ions. They're going to have the same number of neutrons and protons, just they now have a charge. They're positive or they're negative. In most cases with this one, we're going to use a positive, okay? So then it gets repelled from this region here and pushed to the back of the instrument. And what happens is we'll have these fancy magnets that cause them to oscillate, okay? It's sort of like if you're on a merry-go-round, um, you spin that merry-go-round pretty fast, certain kids are going to start getting sick and flying off at certain points. That's the same thing with these, with these atoms, is they're going to start to oscillate, and you can control, and you can say, I only want carbon 12s to make it through, and then only carbon 12s make it through. Everything else flies off the merry-go-round, and then I only want carbon 13s, and so everything else flies off. And so by the time it hits the detector, I can specifically look and say, that was a carbon 12 atom, it weighs 12. That was carbon-13, it weighs 13. And so then, based on how big the peaks or how intense the current was that came off, we're able to say, oh, well, this atom had a ratio of this isotope to this isotope. And so then we're able to look at all of this data from many different places and figure out what is the isotopic abundance for any element. And so when you see that average atomic mass underneath your element, they use instruments like this to figure out what is the average atomic or isotopic abundance for each and every single element.